I sat on the floor and heard... May I have 30 additional seconds? Yield the gentleman an additional 30 seconds. The gentleman's recognized. I sat on the floor and heard my colleague from Oregon, Mr. Walden, talk about a very attractive family from southern Oregon that are somehow going to now face $12,000 deductibles. I want to do a deep dive with Greg, find out what is going on with that family. Because what we have found, people have been using Obamacare as an excuse for some things that are going to happen anyway, or people misunderstand. Let's do this together. Let's explore these areas. Let's give people information going forward. And let's make the system work better, not create a parallel system that will make it work worse. Gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman from Michigan. Mr. Speaker, at this point, I'd like to yield one minute to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Bilirakis, member of the Health Subcommittee. The gentleman from Florida is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Mrs. Chairman, for sponsoring this great bill. Uh, in my state of Florida, 300,000 individuals have lost their health care plans due to Obamacare, and hardworking Americans like my constituent Mark from Pasco County uh, are being adversely affected by this law. Mark currently has a plan that he likes, but uh, Obamacare will take it away. His new equivalent plan on the exchange comes with a $12,000 deductible and $1,000 monthly premiums. He and his wife are about 60 years old and do not qualify for subsidies. While they live, they are healthy. They're very healthy. They, they're punished, Mr. Speaker, and I don't understand. They are punished by the President's health care law. That's why I'm proud to be an original co-sponsor of Keep Your Health Plan Act, to move the barriers preventing hardworking Americans from keeping their health care plans under Obamacare. We need to pass this bill so we can give the American people the peace of mind they deserve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back. Gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman from California. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we continue to reserve. Gentleman time. from California reserves. Gentleman from Michigan is recognized. Mr. Speaker, uh, at this point, I would yield one minute to the gentleman from Nebraska, uh, Mr. Terry, a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee. Gentleman from Nebraska is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, this uh, is really about trust, and people like Andrea Kodad from Omaha feels like that trust has been violated. It's been broken. She was told that she could keep her policy, but then she received her letter saying that you cannot keep your policy. Now a working mom with two young children, her family's premium has ro risen from uh, to 207, I'm sorry, to $770 from 450 per quarter. Her responsibility for coinsurance is now 50%, up from what it was before at 15%. Her out-of-pocket costs rose to over $2,000, and she's paying more for less now. This isn't a better policy, as, pro as we have been told. It takes a big chunk of their family budget. Unfortunately, under Obamacare, she can't keep her plan. She gets more with less, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California continues Mr. to reserve. Mr. Speaker, we, we will continue to reserve our time. The gentleman from Michigan is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I'll yield uh, one minute to the gentleman uh, from Kentucky, Mr. Guthrie. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I rise today in support of this legislation to allow individuals to keep their plans and through, 20, through 2014. Yesterday, my colleagues and I shared powerful stories of many of our constituents who have experienced cancellations and massive rate increases due to Obamacare. In addition to these individuals, I have many more stories of Kentuckians seeing their plans canceled due to Obamacare. Most recently, Sylvia Martin from Owensboro wrote to me that her coverage was canceled and she so far has been unable to get insurance. H.R. 3350 would allow insurance companies to continue offering 2013 plans which would benefit the millions of Americans who have seen their current plans canceled. The American people were told repeatedly, repeatedly if they liked their plan they could keep it. House Republicans today are trying to honor that promise. I yield back. The balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Mr. Speaker, we continue. The gentleman to from California Reserves. Gentleman from Michigan is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, at this point, I'd like to yield one, mi one minute to the gentleman from Tennessee. The gentleman from Tennessee uh, is recognized. Dr. Rowe, one minute. The gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Dr. Rowe, is recognized for one minute. I thank the chairman. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the Keep Your Health Can't Plan Act. This bill is important for many people in my district, including Joanne. 
Joanne lives in Limestone, Tennessee, and because her policy doesn't meet the minimum requirements set by Obamacare, she's been forced to buy a more expensive health care plan. Her premiums will rise from about $95 a month to $200 a month. Joanne thought $95 was affordable, but $200 not. Despite promises of more affordable health care, this law is making insurance unattainable for many across my home state. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Tennessee is our state's largest insurer, and it's announced that we would be forced to send 66,000 cancellation notices to my fellow Tennesseans because of Obamacare. A Medicaid business plan called Cover Tennessee, another 16,000 lose their care. Mr. Speaker, it's well past the time for President Obama to work with members of Congress to provide relief to the families hurting because of this law. I urge my colleagues to support the Keep Your Health Care Plan Act and yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. Gentleman from California continues to reserve. Right gentleman from Michigan. May I just ask how much time each side has? For gentleman me? from Michigan has seven minutes remaining. Gentleman from California, three and a half minutes remaining. Uh, at this point, I yield one minute to the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Meadows. The gentleman from North Carolina is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of H.R. 3350, the Keep Your Health Plan Act, and I'd like to thank Chairman Upton for bringing this bill forward. Despite President Obama's uh, reassurances that if you like your health care plan, you can keep it, 3.5 million plans have already been canceled because of Obamacare. Cynthia, a constituent from Granite Falls, North Carolina, told me about her family recently. She and her husband and three boys have a premium that was $300, has now risen to $1,206, Mr. Speaker. Now, the rhetoric from the Democrats have said that the Republicans are only interested in pushing for a repeal of the health care law rather than fixing it. But this is just not true. So far, this Congress, Republicans have introduced 102 bills designed to fix the broken areas of Obamacare. The Democrats, by contrast, a mere 17. Republicans are bringing another fix today, Mr. Speaker, to the House floor. The Keep Your Health Care Plan allows families across the country, like Cynthia's, to keep their policies without pe penalty. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California. Continue to reserve our Continues time. Continues to reserve. The gentleman from Michigan. Mr. Speaker, I yield uh, two minutes to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Kelly. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized for two minutes. And Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong support of 3350. I thank the gentleman. This is a piece of legislation that protects the people, not a political party, not politicians, not presidents who don't keep promises. This is a letter I got from Melissa and Raleigh in Pennsylvania, Hermitage, PA. Raleigh's a college student paying for her own education. She's working part-time at minimum wage in a local grocery store, paying what she calls an affordable $70 per month for her health care coverage. Now, because of the Affordable Care Act, her hours at the store have already been cut back and now to add insult to injury, she's been uh, notified by the insurance provider that because of Obamacare, she will be canceled after another year and that she's going to be forced to choose a plan that costs triple what she's paying now. Now, Raleigh's mom, Melissa, also sent a letter to our office, a letter of desperation stating that her insurance, her health insurance provider, the one she's always relied on, has now informed her that she will no longer be covered after November 25th. In her letter to our office, Melissa writes, when my daughter or I purchase our own health care in an attempt to be self-sufficient in this country, we're penalized. We're not rewarded. Mr. President, just keep your promise. I can't believe for three years we've told people you can keep these policies. You don't have to worry about it, period. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor, period. And now we find out that it was all just talk. And that's what this country's fed up with. They're tired of the talk that comes out of Washington. They want to have people start representing them. That's what we're here to do. Both sides of the aisle, ladies and gentlemen, both sides of the aisle. It's time to stop the spin. And I really feel sorry for the people that sit in the gallery here. We need to put seatbelts in. This room spins so fast sometimes, it's hard for them just to walk straight when they walk out of here. But I will tell you what, our party will continue to commit ourselves to doing what's right for the American people. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman from Pennsylvania yields back. Members are reminded to direct the remarks to the chair. The gentleman from California. We continue to reserve our gentleman time. gentleman from Michigan. May I, uh, pardon me, inquiry, may I ask the uh, gentleman from California how many speakers you have left? We have two speakers left. Two speakers? Because we just have uh, two speakers as well, myself and, and Ms. Elmer. So, okay. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'll yield uh, 
two minutes to the gentlelady from North Carolina. The gentlelady from North Carolina. Member of the Health Subcommittee. The gentlelady from North Carolina is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of H.R. 3350 to keep your Health Care Plan Act of 2013. You know, as my colleagues across the aisle have pointed out over and over and over again, the ACA is law. But it cannot simply be undone by the White House, and it does call on us in the Congress to do so. You know, Mr. Speaker, we women in this country make 80% of the health care decisions. And women in this country have now been told by the President and our Democrat colleagues that the health care choices that they've made to cover their families are not adequate. In fact, they're being called subpar. And they're trying to intervene. They're trying to keep the women in this country from providing that good, sound health care coverage for their families. That is why we are voting on this bill today, Mr. Speaker. We're voting on it because these are good decisions that have been made by the American people. They're good decisions that have been made by the moms across this country for their families. And we need to do everything we can to protect that. So I call on my colleagues to vote yes on H.R. 3350 so that women in this country can continue to do the good job they're doing for their families and provide good health care coverage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back. The gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from California is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield a minute to the Democratic leader, the gentlelady from California, Ms. Pelosi. The gentlelady from California is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding, and I commend him for his great leadership in helping to pass the Affordable Care Act, uh, honoring the vows of our founders for liberty, the freedom to pursue their happiness. It's life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, a healthier life, freedom to pursue that happiness. You know, it's a funny thing when people talk about Washington, D.C., and how people uh, don't get along well. We disagree. We have major disagreements on policy, and one of them is whether uh, health care is a right for all in our country or a privilege uh, for the few. And, uh, but it, it doesn't take away from the fact that we are people and we serve in this institution and we have some areas of agreement one day and, and uh, the kaleidoscope changes the next day. To the point where people are always surprised when I say to them, I pray for the Congress every day and on Sunday especially, I pray for our colleagues, our Republican colleagues, as well as our Democratic colleagues, as well as the President of the United States. Barack Obama or George W. Bush or whoever he may be uh, because the success of the president and the success of all of us is a success for the American people if we can work together to find common ground uh, for the public good. And when I pray for all of us, I, I pray I have wishes for us. I wish that I wish that my Republican colleagues could see how successful the Affordable Care Act is in California. I wish you could hear the stories of family after family after family being liberated, freed from the constraint, being job locked because a family has a pre-existing condition uh, so that now they can follow their passion, not be chained by a policy, follow their passion to, uh, to be self-employed, to start a business, or to uh, change jobs. I wish you could hear all of these stories. I wish you would not close your mind to them because this initiative has been transformative and I would have hoped that whatever had been proposed would be to strengthen it or to improve it and we all have the humility to know uh, that any bill, whatever our pride of, of uh, involvement in it is, uh, can be improved. And so that is why it's particularly disappointing to come to the floor today to see a bill that says to the Affordable Care Act and all of these people with all of their stories, we are going to unravel this. We are going to unravel all of the good things, whether it's pre-existing conditions, ending that discrimination, whether it's lifetime limits, whether it's uh, annual limits, whether it's being a woman but no longer being a pre-existing condition, whether it's for seniors or for kids 20, 18 to 26 years old, or for little children even now before the bill is fully, fully enacted. So I hope and I pray and I wish uh, that our colleagues could see the evidence and that the decisions would be evidence-based rather than politically motivated. 
I think it's really important what this Congress does today. Each member has to make his or her own decision. But the fact is, is that uh, this body, our words weigh a ton, and our votes are even weightier than that. And I hope the message that comes out of this Congress is there's a discussion going on, but there's a values decision that has been made in favor of the American people, uh, that if we have to thread a needle to, to get a result, let's do that. But let's not unravel the whole sweater because that would be, not be a comfort to the American people. So let's act to strengthen, not weaken. Let's vote no on the Upton bill. Thank you. I yield back the balance of my time. General Eddie yields back. The gentleman from Michigan is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm just, we have just uh, the close, so I, we'll reserve our time. Gentleman from Michigan reserves. Gentleman from California is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, at this time, I yield to the very distinguished men member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Doyle, the balance of our time. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized for two and a half minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let's think about where America was prior to the enactment of the Affordable Care Act. 30, 40 million of our citizens uh, without insurance. People with pre-existing conditions either couldn't get insurance or had to pay so much they couldn't afford their insurance. Women being charged twice as much as men. People against that had insurance had annual and lifetime caps. Did you ever wonder when you see families holding fundraisers to raise money for their kids' drugs so that a kid has a cancer and they're, they're trying to raise... These were people that had insurance and come up against annual caps or lifetime caps and the insurance company didn't pay anymore. Half the families in America filing bankruptcy. People with insurance up against caps, no more payments, families losing everything. We put an end to that with the Affordable Care Act. And how did we do that? We come up with a private system that required everybody to participate, young and old, rich and poor, healthy and sick. Because when you put everybody in that risk pool, healthy people help us enable the insurance industry to keep rates at an affordable rate for those people who have pre-existing conditions and who have chronic diseases. That's how the system works. What my colleague Mr. Upton is proposing today unravels that system. Make no mistake about it. If we continue to allow private insurance companies to sell policies that discriminate against women, that set annual caps and lifetime caps, if we continue to allow all of those practices that every American, 80, 90 percent of Americans said they want in their health care system, then that risk pool goes away. Then rates go sky high and you will have raised premiums for every American in this country. Now, I would say to my colleagues, we want to fix, there are unforeseen circumstances we knew would come up in this bill. And I led the charge in my caucus. I told my caucus, if the president doesn't come up with a fix, if our leadership doesn't have an alternative solution to this, many of us would consider voting for the Upton bill, as bad as it is because it undermines the health care bill. Well, the good news is the president has responded. We will have a motion to recommit today that responds. And I want to make it clear, there's nothing in the Upton bill that mandates insurance companies to do this. This is a shall bill. In the end, just let me say, my friends, you'd have some credibility. You introduced 102 bills. You never put one of them on the floor for a vote. So don't pretend that you care about the American people's health care here. You're just trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Democrats are not going to let you do that. Gentlemen's time expired. Gentlemen's time's expired. Members are reminded to address their remarks to the chair and not to other members of the body. The gentleman from Michigan is recognized. May I inquire how much time we have remaining? The gentleman from Michigan has two and a half minutes remaining. I, I, I yield myself the balance of time. I, I just say to my friend from Pennsylvania, we would have liked to have had some amendments when the Affordable Care Act passed and the rule denied us uh, any amendments. So why are we here? Why are we here this afternoon? You know, most observers of the legislative process would say that the President's Health Care Act would never have passed back in 2010 without the assurance that the President gave, even many times this year,
that you could keep your health care if you liked it. If you liked it, you didn't have to do anything, period. I don't think it would have passed in this chamber or in the Senate without that promise that the president gave. Then, millions of Americans uh, in the last couple of months have gotten mail. And in that mail, it's the cancellation notices. And they're seeing their rates go up 200, 300, even 400 percent. Deductibles going up in the, in the thousands of dollars. And people coming to us all last week when we were home for our veterans events and parades and all the things that we did, bringing those letters to us and saying, hey, what's going on? I thought I could keep this. And you know, until yesterday, yesterday afternoon, when it looked like we were going to get as many as 300 votes, including perhaps Mr. Doyle's and others, when it looked like we were going to get 300 votes for a bill that we introduced only a week and a half ago, all of a sudden the president felt that he needed to act. It wasn't until this bill that he came to the mic and said, you know what, I made a mistake, I'm sorry, maybe this thing will, will fix it. But until then, he was going to sit on his hands and just watch us, watch millions of Americans literally watch their health care, watch maybe their economic lives just go over the cliff. He was prepared to do that until we showed that we had some bipartisan zip around here to try and, in, in fact, enforce, make whole his promise that he has said over and over and over again. That's what this bill does. Read it. It's not too long, a couple sentences long. I commend our leadership for bringing this bill to the floor as fast as they can. Man, five or six legislative days from when it was introduced, that's pretty good. But more importantly, it got a wake-up call to someone down, down the street on Pennsylvania Avenue saying, hey, something's wrong. Let's, let's restore what we might have said. I, I yield back my time and urge my colleagues to vote yes on the bill. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. All time for debate has expired. Pursuant to House Resolution 413, the previous question is ordered on the bill. The question is on engrossment in third reading of the bill. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Third reading. A bill to authorize health insurance insurers to continue to offer for sale current individual health insurance coverage in satisfaction of the minimum essential health insurance coverage requirement and for other purposes. Speaker. The gentleman from Michigan. What purpose does the gentleman from Mr. New Jersey Speaker. seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I have a motion to recommit at the desk. Oh. Is the gentleman opposed to the bill? I am opposed to the bill. The gentleman qualifies. The clerk will report the motion. The, the clerk will suspend, uh, suspend. For what purpose does the gentleman now from Michigan rise? Now I reserve rise? a point of order. Now I reserve a point of order. Point of order from the gentleman from Michigan has been reserved. The clerk will continue. Mr. Andrews of New Jersey moves to recommit the bill, H.R. 3350, to the Committee on Energy and Commerce with instructions to report the same back to the House forthwith with the following amendment. Strike all after the enacting clause and insert the following. Section 1, short title. This act may be cited as the Consumer Health Plan Protection Act of 2013. Dispense with the reading. Is there objection? objection. We would like to hear it. If there is objection. The clerk will continue. Section 2, maintaining existing coverage. A, in general, notwithstanding any provision of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, including any amendment made by such act or by the Health Care and Education Reconciliation Act of 2010, in the case of health insurance coverage offered by a health insurance issuer in the individual market that is in effect for an individual as of October 1, 2013, the issuer may continue such coverage for such individual for a planned year beginning in 2014 in such market outside of an exchange established under Section 1311 or 1321 of such Act, 42 U.S.C. 18031-18041. B. Treatment is grandfathered health plan in satisfaction of minimum essential coverage. Health insurance coverage described in subsection A should be treated as a grandfathered health plan for purposes of the amendment made by Section 1501B of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. 
C. Notice. Ms. Mr. Uh, from, Speaker, I, we uh, would dispense, urge that we dispense with the reading of the bill. Is there objection? Or the, of the motion recommend. There is no objection. The clerk will suspend. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized for five minutes in support of his motion. Without objection. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, uh, we've listened to the many stories told by people this morning uh, with great empathy about people who got a cancellation notice and want to keep the policy that they have. The issue before the House is whether we want to solve the problem or create another problem. That's the issue. If we want to work together, as we should, to solve the problem of Americans receiving cancellation notices and not being able to keep policies that they have, it requires us to do three things. First, we have to legally authorize insurance companies to offer these policies on into the future. The democratic plan, which I have proposed, does that. And frankly, so does Mr. Upton's bill. The second thing that we have to do, though, is make sure that the insurance companies offer the plans for sale. It really does you no good at all if you have the right to buy a plan that the insurance company refuses to sell. Mr. Upton's bill is mute on that point. It might be called the insurance company's bill of rights because they have the right to do or not do anything they choose. But the people that we all say that we want to protect really have no rights at all. This is an important distinguishing point in the plan that I'm offering now and I urge everyone to support. We have drawn from language offered by my friend from Illinois, Ms. Schakowsky, which requires state insurance commissioners around this country to be vigilant protectors of consumers rather than corporate apologists for insurance companies. Our plan says that if someone's cancellation was arbitrary and thoughtless and unfair, the insurance commissioner must act and protect the people that we heard read in those letters today. Our plan says that if rate increases are discriminatory, if you got a rate increase because you're a woman who was pregnant, or you got a rate increase because you had skin cancer, or breast cancer, or diabetes, that the insurance company, the insurance commissioner rather, must act and protect the consumer against that indignity. It does you no good that this bill is called the keep your insurance if you want to bill. It should be called the keep your insurance if you want to and the insurance company allows you to bill. We are correcting that wrong and remedying that wrong with our plan. And thirdly, it doesn't do any good to give people the chance to renew their plans if that renewal results in a huge premium increase for everyone else in the country. That is what the underlying bill does. The underlying bill says that these plans, which I would really equate to selling an automobile with no airbags and no seatbelts, now, our plan says, look, if you want to keep driving a car with no air airbags and no seatbelts, you can keep driving. But people can't sell a car with no airbags and no seatbelts to a new consumer, which is what the underlying bill permits. Now, when that happens, here's what's going to happen. People in the new state marketplaces are going to see a huge increase in their premiums. People who get shut covered at work are going to see a huge increase in their premiums. It's going to spill over to Medigap policies for seniors and people on Medicare. The bill really should be called the Guaranteed Premium Increase Act of 2013 because that's what it is. Our bill corrects that by saying let's help the people we say we want to try to help. People who like their plan and want to keep it, not everyone that the insurance company could dupe or lure into buying a car with no airbag and no seatbelts. And finally, working together means not forgetting about some other people who write letters we haven't heard much about today. The family of Mr. Doyle talked about, whose daughter has cancer, who has an insurance policy 
but has to have a beef and beer or a golf tournament to raise money to pay their bills. I want to help that person and not repeal the Affordable Care Act. How about the woman who had breast cancer 10 years ago and can now be told, we're sorry, you can't buy an insurance policy, you've got to pay more if you do. I want to help her by banning discrimination based on pre-existing conditions. If we really want to work together, let's adopt this plan, let's really help the people we're saying are trying to help, and not the insurance industry of the United States of America. Gentlemen's time's expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I must regret that I do insist on the point of order. In my opinion, the pending amendment violates Clause 7 of Rule 16 of the Rules of the House, which requires that an amendment be germane to the matter it is amending. It is not germane to the bill because Section 3 imposes a mandate on state insurance commissioners and Section 4 amends the Public Health Service Act which is, in fact, beyond the scope of the base text. Does anyone else wish to speak to the point of order? I do, Mr. Gentleman Speaker. I'd like Jersey to hear on the point of order. Speak to the point of order. Mr. Speaker, my understanding is my friend, the chairman's objection is based on the principle of germaneness. The underlying bill, by its very title, purports to protect Americans who have received a cancellation notice uh, for a policy that they want to keep. Now, there's a disagreement here over how to protect those Americans. The underlying bill uh, does not have requirements that state insurance commissioners act to protect those individuals. Our plan does. Our plan does. Now, this is a disagreement over the means to protect American consumers. The underlying bill says we'll trust the insurance industry. Our bill says no, we'll enforce the insurance laws. I would respectfully submit this does not rise to a difference in germaneness. This is a difference of opinion. The, the bill on the floor uh, purports to protect the Americans that I talked about. We think it doesn't. Our plan does protect those Americans in a different way. The underlying subject matter of this bill is how do you protect Americans who wish to keep the insurance plan that they have. We believe we have a more effective way of doing that. The majority disagrees. The House deserves a vote on that. No technicality, no procedural nicety should deny us the chance to take a vote on whose plan is right. We should proceed with this vote. Does anyone else wish to speak to the point of order? Seeing none, the chair is prepared to rule. The gentleman from Michigan makes a point of order that, in, that the instructions proposed in the motion to recommit offered by the gentleman from New Jersey are not germane. Clause 7 of Rule 16, the germaneness rule, provides that no proposition on a subject different from that under consideration shall be admitted under color of amendment. The bill permits health insurance issuers that offer health insurance coverage in the individual market on January 1, 2013 to continue to make such coverage available for sale during 2014. The amendment proposed in the motion to recommit in pertinent part requires state insurance commissioners to examine notices of health insurance cancellations or conversions. It also addresses the regulation of health insurance rates. Specifically, the amendment delineates what would constitute inadequate notice of cancellation or conversions of health insurance coverage and directs state insurance commissioners to investigate such cases of inadequate notice. Additionally, it permits the Secretary of Health and Human Services or the relevant state insurance regulator to, to take corrective actions if health insurance rates are determined to be excessive, unjustified, or unfairly discriminatory. Such corrective action may include the assessment of civil monetary penalties. The bill does not address any of those subject matters. Instead, it is confined to the subject matter of extending into 2014 the authority to offer health insurance coverage that was for sale on the individual market in 2013. The chair, therefore, finds that the amendment proposed in the motion motion to recommit goes beyond the subject matter of the underlying bill. It is therefore not germane. The point of order is sustained. Sure. The gentleman from New Jersey. I respectfully appeal the ruling of the chair. The question is, shall the decision of the chair stand as the judgment of the House? And For what purpose is the gentleman Mr. from Michigan? Speaker, I would move to table the appeal of the ruling of the chair. The question is on the motion to table. Those in favor shall say aye. aye. Those opposed shall say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Speaker, on that I demand the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise. A sufficient number having risen. The yeas and nays are orders. Member record their votes by electronic device. Pursuant to Clause 9 of Rule 20, this 15-minute vote on the motion to table will be followed by a five-minute vote on passage of the bill if arising without further proceedings 
in recommittal. This is a 15-minute vote. So a procedural vote, really, and what it's really about is the Democrats' alternative to this uh, bill put forth by Fred Upton from Michigan. You may recall yesterday, President Obama announced that he'd like insurance companies to extend current policies, the ones that don't meet the minimum coverage requirements as laid out in the health care bill, through the end of 2014. And Representative Upton's bill will uh, do the same, but kind of go one more by also allowing insurance companies to continue to sell similar uh, similar policies through 2014. You may have noticed uh, we covered the uh, vote on the rule about an hour ago or so, and there were six Democrats that voted with the uh, majority Republicans in the House on that rule vote. They are uh, Braley from Iowa, Costa from California, Matheson from uh, Utah, McKinter, uh, McKintry from North Carolina, Owens of New York, and Peterson of Minnesota. So it'll be interesting to see how those representatives vote, uh, both on this procedural vote and then uh, the vote which we expect after this one on final passage. Let's uh, get you the phone numbers. We're going to take some calls in just a minute. If you're uh, listening on radio, the number for Democrats would be 202 585 3885. If you want to call on the Republican line, call 202 585 3886. And our independent callers join us at 202. Five eight five three eight eight seven. We had a chance a few minutes ago to speak with a Capitol Hill reporter to try and understand a bit more about what's going on with this uh, legislation today. Joining us, Russell Berman, a staff writer for The Hill. Good morning, Russell. So the House uh, has been debating this bill. Now a, uh, a vote going on this bill by Chairman uh, Energy and Commerce Chairman Fred Upton. What's the bill about? Well, it's called the Keep Your Health Care Plan act and it would uh, allow people whose health care plans have been canceled in the last few months due uh, partially to the affordable care act to keep them for another year um, the president has vowed to veto this bill and democrats are going to try to put up their own alternative which is very similar to what the president laid out as far as an administrative well, that's, fix. That's yesterday. my question. How is this bill by uh, Representative Upton different than what the president said he wanted to do? Well, the, the chief criticism from Democrats is that it would not only allow people who were on those health care plans and had them canceled to sign up for them uh, again if the insurance company offered it, but it would open up all of those health care plans to new customers as well, and Democrats say that would undermine uh, the exchanges in the Affordable Care Act to, to such an extent that it would really unravel the law. So how much support, if any, then would you expect Congressman uh, Upton is going to get from House Democrats? Well, that's the big question. Democrats are not very happy that the administration has messed up the rollout and the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. And so we can expect, I think, at least a few dozen Democrats to defect um, partially out of their own political need uh, back home and partially to send a message to the White House about uh, how unhappy they are. Um, but the fact that the Democrats are offering their own alternative in the form of a motion to recommit might keep the number of defections down because it gives the Democrats who would be considering voting for the Upton bill an alternative to say that, you know, I voted for a bill to allow you to keep your health care plan, just not this Republican bill. So what are the details of the uh, Democrats' version that they've offered then? Well, they're uh, comparing it to the, to the legislation that Senator Mary Landrieu of Louisiana has offered in the Senate. They say it's different in that it would, uh, the Landrieu legislation would be permanent. It would allow uh, the, the insurance companies to permanently continue to offer these plans. The House Democratic plan would only be for one year, and they say that is um, more in keeping with you know, the, the intent of the law and would do less damage to the Affordable Care Act. And speaking of the Senate, if this bill does pass the House, it goes to the Senate, what happens? Anything? Uh, probably, probably not. I mean, the, the Senator, uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid has not indicated whether he's even going to bring up the Landrieu bill. You can expect that he's not going to bring up uh, the Upton bill, particularly since uh, uh, the president has, has uh, vowed, threatened to veto it. Um, so it's unclear what future it has. But, you know, if the rollout of the law continues to be problematic, then the momentum for this kind of legislation is going to continue to build, and so that's when we might have to see some action in the Senate. Russell Berman, staff writer for The Hill, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. 
So the vote on the floor right now on the Democrats' alternative, it's a procedural vote, but it's really about the uh, the Democratic alternative to the Republican-sponsored bill that would uh, do something with the Health Care Act. You've seen some of the debate. We are looking at what you say on Facebook and on Twitter. In fact, here's a Facebook comment for, uh, for you from Kurt who says, Ugh, why even listen to the Republicans on this? They're not interested in making the ACA work. They just want to eliminate health care for those whom the ACA serves. They have nothing to add to this discussion. Shut them up and shut them down. Republicans are working hard to break government completely. That on our uh, C-SPAN Facebook page. On Twitter, we see it hashtag C-SPAN chat. Uh, EG writes, health care a privilege for the few. Nancy referring to uh, Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. I thought 85% of Americans had insurance before ACA. ACA was to help the 15% question mark. Let's go to the phones now, and uh, you can see the numbers on your screen. I'd like to hear from you. Let's start out in Florida, Cape Coral, Florida, on our Democrat line. It's Jermaine. Hi there. How you doing? Uh, Good. I want to I wanna comment on the motion on the table right now. Here's what I don't understand about why the Republicans are still being obstructionists. If you still disagree with the Democratic plan, why not still allow a vote to happen? Because from the standpoint of you still have the majority. All Republicans can vote no. Even though I think they'll be wrong by voting no, they can still vote no. But the fact that you're obstructing the same type of goal that you say you want for your constituents of letting them keep junk insurance plans, because that's what they are. They are junk insurance plans. I was one of those constituents that had junk insurance plans. Then I finally got a job and I got good insurance. But I was looking forward to the ACA when they first passed it because if I was going to continue to get junk insurance, I wanted something that was more affordable for me. I got a wife and a son at home, and we don't make a lot of money. So, therefore, the ACA would have been valuable for me. Going forward, Republicans should just allow votes to happen. They cannot. Uh, they can say no, just as Democrats can say no on a Republican bill. Republican bill is still going to pass. It's not going to pass the Senate. It's going to get vetoed by the White House. So what is the point of allowing something to not have a vote when your vote is not even going to exist at all anyway? All right, Jermaine, appreciate the call. In fact, uh, Jermaine makes a good point. The White House did announce that should this particular legislation uh, sponsored by Representative, uh, Representative Upton make it to the president's desk, he says he would veto it. Let's go over to Terry in Carson City, Nevada, on our Republicans line. Hi there. You're on C-SPAN, Terry. Good morning. Good morning. I'd just like to say that uh, I'm pretty sick of the arrogance of our president and the Democratic Party acting like they're geniuses and all us poor stupid little people out in the United States don't have any idea what is contained in our health care bills and I don't want these people making a decision for me I'm capable of doing that myself that's all I have to say all right Gwen Oak Maryland it's Dennis you're up next go ahead you're on C-SPAN you've been watching the debate what do you think well, I, um, I, I will comment on the debate and, and just the procedural issues. Obviously, when the Democratic side, and by the way, I'm a, an unaffiliated uh, 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 voter. I, I, I am not a Republican or a Democrat. Um, when the, the Democratic side held the majority, procedurally, they blocked lots of amendments coming before them on this health care bill, which is why it was unanimous Democratic Democrats voting for uh, ACA and not one Republican voting for it. But that's, that's history. What goes forward now, here, here's my point. I spent 25 years in the insurance business. I've sold in the competitive market, and, and I know that our companies that we represented had to be competitively priced. And, yes, it was actuarial based on morbidity tables, most frequent users. And, that I mean, that's business. Uh, car insurance operates the same way. You had a bunch of accidents, guess what? You're going to pay more. But when we talk about health care, why are we regulating the insurance industry? We now provide health care for millions of people in the United States military by training doctors and, and medical staff. And as a result or a, a requirement for, for that training, you need to give a certain amount of time to the United States Navy, the Marines, the Army. And then if you want to go into private practice, you can why can't that be expanded? If we need more health care providers, which is what we're trying to do, provide health care for people, why can't we have a government program much like the military, much like the veterans, 
and leave the insurance markets alone. They'll compete with one another. Now the government will compete with them as well in providing health care. That's how you solve the problem. We'll, we'll, we'll put people to work by building facilities. We'll put people in the educational system with no uh, 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 big student loans because we'll pay for that. And now we've got someone that's going to work within the system. I think it's a better solution than trying to regulate the insurance industry. All right. Appreciate the call, Dennis. Thank you very much. In fact, President Obama today scheduled to meet with executives, CEOs from uh, health insurance companies, part of his uh, strategy to, uh, as the uh, Associated Press put it, rescue his much-criticized health care program. You can see there on the screen, it's a procedural vote, a vote on the Democratic, uh, the Democrats, response or their version of Mr. Upton, the Republican uh, Commerce Committee chairman's bill that would allow insurance companies to extend current policies. The president said he wants to do that. Mr. Upton and the Republicans are saying they want to do that, but they also want to let insurance companies continue to sell those policies that don't meet the minimum requirements of the uh, ACA. Let's go over to uh, Claude in Brandon, South Carolina. Claude, I think you're there now. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm Carol I'm from Georgia. I just want to nope. say that I voted for President Obama the first time. This time I didn't even vote, period. I'm so disgusted with the way he's leading our government. I don't agree with the affordable health care. I think this is just to make him a name, even though he takes and vetoes everything. I would agree with all of the Republicans. And he was, I voted for him because I thought he would be for the poor. I'm not wealthy myself, not even medium class. But I voted for him because I thought he was really for the poor. I see that he's just got an agenda to make a name for himself and getting Obamacare. He's not really for the poor. Like he's leading people to believe that he lied, saying that the people who had insurance could continue to get that insurance. And he has made a lie. That's not the only time that I disagree with him since I voted for him. But I've always been Democrat. I will never vote Democrat again because I've been mis misled. I'm not completely for all Republicans. I'm leaning more toward independent now. I don't understand. If we, the people of the United States, can't stand up and have our voice heard, why couldn't this have been put on a voter for us to go out here and vote when we're going to vote for this coverage instead of it being left up? and taking as far as it has and as far as the jobs growth go what he's doing is so wrong it's just pathetic he keeps saying there's jobs being created and created since he's been in office that's a lie maybe for the richer people it has or people that's got higher learning but he, all these people that are lower class and poor they don't stand a chance don't have nowhere to go all right appreciate your call we're going to go to hayden alabama on our line for republicans it's chris chris you're on c-span thank you uh today is a sad day uh, even though i'm a republican i am uh, absolutely frustrated that uh, our country could be run in such a way where both parties are uh, responsible for the inability to basically get things either done or fixed. Now, I, I listened to the entire uh, previous hour or so, and it's ironic that as the Democrats or originally rammed this through, not allowing amendments, uh, basically getting zero Republican support, are now uh, decrying the fact that they're not being included, listened to, etc. Both sides treat this as a zero-sum game. Uh, the Democrats want, uh, believe unless they win it all, uh, they're losers, and the same goes for the Republicans. Both sides ex exaggerate. Not all of these private policies are junk. Probably the vast minority are junk, and the same goes for the Republicans. Not everyone is seeing a rate increase through the Obamacare system. So both sides are guilty of taking the probably less than 5% of the cases that are you know, bad news and, and hyping them. And then uh, yesterday the president took what I thought was one of the most unconstitutional steps I could imagine, where the president is now basically telling the insurance companies, you don't have to follow a duly passed and enacted federal law. The president is unable to fix Obamacare through administrative action. Uh, the, as one of the 
representatives pointed out, the insurance companies, I'm sure, are being told by their lawyers, you cannot just take the president's word for it that it's okay to disregard this federal law because people who subsequent to this get policies that don't have coverage or they pass away because of inadequate coverage are going to sue them. So this whole situation is a disaster, and it, it's just incredible that neither the Republicans nor the Democrats can get together to uh, provide adequate oversight to head off these problems before they occur. And I won't even get into the fact that apparently the president and his staff and the people behind this knew this was going to happen years ago. All right, tell you what, Chris, we're going to move along. Appreciate your points as we come up here on the top of the hour. You can see the phone numbers again if you're on radio. Give us a call for the Democrat line at 202-585-3885. Republicans, 202-585-3886. And anybody else, 202-585-3887. Take another look at uh, our Twitter account here. We can see uh, Miss Marie tweets in that Democrats interested in one-year Obamacare fix to get them reelected. D.C. elites don't care about people they want to control and ACA tax revenue. That's at hashtag C-SPAN chat. Uh, let's move along. Go to Sun City, California. It's Rudy. Hi, Rudy. Uh, how you doing? Um, uh, I'm a Democrat, and um, this is just a shame that, uh, you know, the people will be denied coverage because of this bill. Um, like the gentleman said before, um, we should all just be able to, you know, come together. And um, it, it's just a sad state of affairs. And I believe in the ACA, Obamacare, whatever you may want to call it. But, um, you know, I pay for people on Medi-Cal. I pay for people on Social Security. I don't care. I guess that's just the liberal part in me. Um, you know, I believe everybody needs a hand. Um, I'm only a $40,000 a year person. And um, I don't see any problem with, you know, giving people a hand and letting them help themselves. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Take a look at our Facebook page. Tammy uh, writes on Facebook, Give us real choices. What Obama has for U.S. is nothing more than a government takeover of health care. If they can't repeal right now, at least offer U.S. a law that allows U.S. to have affordable choices because Obamacare isn't a choice and it's definitely not affordable. It's socialism, says... Tammy. Fran from Chesapeake, Virginia, from our uh, line for others, on our line for others. Hi there. You're on C-SPAN. What do you think? Uh, you've been watching some of the debate, listening to some of the calls. What would you like to tell us? Watching all of the debate, and what I don't understand is how the representatives are forgetting about us, the middle class, who used to be the middle class. You know, $50,000, $60,000 a year used to be enough for you to support your family and have a decent life. But with all these changes, to the to the health care that's going on right now, my family has just been crushed. We've been tripled our, our premiums, our deductible has gone up to eight thousand dollars. I mean, there's just no way that if anybody gets sick that we're even gonna be able to make it anymore. I don't believe that the president has been engaged in anything that's gone on. Seems to me he kind of leaves it up to other people, and then when bad news happens, he can say he doesn't know about it. And that's not right. Our country wasn't founded the way it's moving right now. We need less government, more choice, and just let it get out the way and let the free markets work the way they're supposed to. Thank you. I appreciate the call. Let's go to Florida. Angela, hi there. You're on C-SPAN. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes. In reference to what the young lady just said, um, the free market wasn't working. Uh, people were being... Um, deceived, people were being cheated out of um, money that they thought they were paying for good plans and good policies uh, for insurance, and at the end of the day, they found out they had no coverage. But the bottom line is, um, they, I think they're just moving too fast to call this uh, a defeat, to cause it, to say that it's not working. I believe that within time, the ACA will work Everybody will be insured, even those who have um, lost the insurance uh, from uh, from the um, big insurance companies. Will the, um, the president will come up with a plan so that everyone will be recovered, um, be covered, and uh, have insurance? And that's my take on it. Uh -huh. People need. 
So, yeah, thanks for calling C-SPAN. Uh, just to let you know here, as we can see this vote winding down, this is a vote on a procedural uh, motion uh, by, made by the Democrats, their version of changing this Keep Your Health Care Plan bill offered by Representative Upton. Following this, there should be a short vote uh, on the bill itself, a five-minute vote on passage of the bill, and that should be it for the week here in the House. The Senate, of course, uh, not in today, so we'll get a few more of your phone calls in. Tom in Pennsylvania on our line for Republicans. Go ahead, you're on C-SPAN. Tom? This is Tom. Hi there. This is Tom. Yeah, uh, I am a senior citizen. My wife and I are well beyond the years of uh, conceiving, and I don't think we should be required to pay for anybody's abortions. Uh, quite honestly, I think it's time that the gentleman who got the lady pregnant should be responsible for uh, taking care of the expenses of her abortion. Uh, I am a violent or very virulent uh, opponent of Obamacare. I think what they should have done was taken and come up with a program like the WPA and made people responsible for their own families. My father worked as a WPA worker in order to support our family during the Depression. And I think it should have remained that way. And I think if the Republicans would have uh, taken and joined in with the Democrats in making uh, a system where people could learn to do work instead of just sitting back on welfare. Mr. Young of Alaska votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes aye. Mr. Heisinga. Mr. Heisinga of Michigan votes aye. Mr. Holding. Mr. Holding voted aye. Mr. Brady of Texas. Mr. Brady of Texas voted aye. This is Carolyn Maloney of New York. This is Carolyn Maloney of New York votes no. Mr. Duffy. Mr. Duffy votes aye. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Off eye on no for Ms. Wilson of Florida. Mr. Murphy of Florida. Mr. Murphy of Florida votes no. Ms. McMorris Rogers. Ms. McMorris Rogers votes aye. Ms. Sewell. Ms. Sewell of Alabama votes no. Mr. Schock. Mr. Schock votes aye. Mr. Nadler. Mr. Nadler votes no. Mr. McHenry. Mr. McHenry votes aye.
On this vote, the yeas are 229, the nays are 199, 191. The motion to table is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. First, the gentleman from New Jersey seek recognition. I have a motion to recommit at the desk. Opposed to the bill? I am opposed to the bill. The gentleman qualifies. The clerk will report the motion. Mr. Andrews of New Jersey moves to recommit the bill, H.R. 3350, to the Committee on Energy and Commerce with instructions to report the same back to the House forthwith with the following amendment. Strike to reserve a point of order. Point of order is reserved by the gentleman from Michigan. The clerk will continue. Strike all after the enacting clause and insert the following. Section 1, short title. This act may be cited as, as the